Hello ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about Noah Hawley's Alien FX Hulu slash whatever series. This is of course the brand new, only thing we know that is being made in the Alien universe at this point in time. I think even Marvel slowly wound down the comics that they were doing. I began reviewing them and the latest issue hasn't come out yet. Or, or I don't think it has, I, I can't remember, I, I checked recently, it's not there. Anyway, this series, uh, there's lots of updates about it. It can be filmed in Thailand. Awesome, unique place to, to shoot anyway, uh, unlike most other places that I know uh, host these kind of series, generally speaking, so that's interesting. Uh, we do know that it's going to be set on Earth, so Thailand is a is an interesting choice of places. Uh, into the not-too-distant future, it's going to be about Wayland Yutani, the alien, etc, etc, etc. We know that it's going to have a mercenary slash soldier uh, and their sister is going to be in a synthetic body, so there's kind of synthetic mind swapped and personalities being put all over the place, body swapping. Quite a fascinating expansion to the mythos, I'm sure you would all agree. Whether they land it or not remains to be seen. But the latest update uh, comes to us in the, well, basically from an Esquire uh, interview, which we'll get to now. Side note, ladies and gents, I have just had some lunch. And if I'm talking a bit funny, uh, I did the Hot Ones Challenge live. I've still got some of the sauces that I'm using up. My mouth hurts. I've accidentally just had some, and boy, I forgot how hot they really were. Anyway, so <laughs> you don't need to know that, but I just thought it was funny anyway. So here we go. Um, Esquire uh, states and asks Noah Hawley the following. FX's John Landgraf described your upcoming alien spin-off as a beast. And, quote, a really big world-building exercise for you. What can you tell us about how the world-building exercise is going? Uh, okay, a few things to point out there. So, John Landgraf specifically said, yeah, it's a beast. It's a really big world-building exercise. Nice to hear. That is that is good to hear. That is good to know. Um, it's kind of information that we'd already, we already knew this anyway. But just to kind of drive it home... That you know they're really pushing the world building out there, and actually, what he says, his re his response, is pretty key there, uh, and it's interesting. So he says the following: It's going great. It's going slowly, unfortunately, given the scale of it. I've made a certain business out of reinvention. We'll come to that. Alien is a fascinating story, but it's not just a monster movie. It's about how we're trapped between the primordial past and the artificial intelligence of our future. We're both trying to kill us. It's set on Earth of the future. At this moment, I describe that as Edison versus Wettinghouse, or Westinghouse, sorry, versus Tesla. Someone's going to monopolize electricity. We just don't know which one it is yet. Now, we'll break down these things in a moment. In the movies, we have this Wayland yutani Corporation, which is clearly also developing artificial intelligence. But what if there are other companies trying to look at Im immorality Oh, sorry, immortality in a different way with cyborg enhancements or transhuman downloads. Which of those technologies is going to win? It's ultimately a classic science fiction question. Does humanity deserve to survive? As Sigourney Weaver said in the second movie, I don't know which species is worse. At least they don't F each other over for a percentage. Even if the show was 60% of the best horror action on the planet, there's still 40% where we have to ask, what are we talking about it? Um... Uh, what are we talking about it beneath it all? Thematically, it has to be interesting. It's humbling to get to play with the iconography of this world. Right. Uh, I think that's uh, genuinely quite interesting. I also think the audio has just been peaking, so I'm sorry about that. Anyway, let's talk about this. So, let's break it down bit by bit. Um, first and foremost, the, the, the key element there is they're you know, talking about other companies, right? That's been the headline that loads of people have run. I think that's somewhat interesting. I think it does overlook the fact that other companies have been in the universe already. Siegson being one of them uh, features prominently in Alien Isolation. You are literally at Siegson stations uh, and things like that with the Siegson, uh, you know, working Joe androids. So, you know, to sit there and be like, well, what if there's other companies? I mean, we know that there have been. Um, so I don't know what that says of Noah Hawley and his... You know, his own uh, research on this topic. Because it doesn't... He should know that. But maybe maybe there'll be Siegson Easter eggs. You never know. 
Um, I don't know where the rights lie with that, because that was from Sega and, and, and things like that. I don't know whether they own specifically Seagsen. Who knows? Like, it's just one of those things I don't know. Um, now, he says he's made a business out of reinvention. And I have maintained, and I, I continue to maintain, the alien doesn't need to be, in, to be reinvented. Uh, it just doesn't. It, it needs fresh takes. Similar to how uh, superhero movies have done it recently. They'll take a superhero movie genre and then they'll transplant it into another movie genre, like a subgenre. So, um, one movie I've, I've been massively promoting that I want DC to do has always been do a body horror Clayface movie. It would knock everyone's tits off. They'd love it. I think. Uh, but if you look at how certain main umbrella genres, so like superheroes, how they've maintained their pace has been to do like a heist movie or this movie or oh, a science fiction movie. They've always been, uh, you know, accumulating under uh, another subgenre. So I don't think, strictly speaking, Alien needs to be reinvented. And I've said that many times. Uh, it doesn't. Now, he does say about this whole, you know, we're trapped between our primordial past and the artificial intelligence of our future. We're, uh, they're both trying to kill us. It's set on Earth in the future. And at this moment, I describe that as Edison versus Westinghouse versus Tesla. Someone's going to monopolize electricity. We just don't know which one it is. And I think there's something to be said there because it could be that he's talking about, you know, weaponizing the alien, right? monopolizing the alien. Uh, it could be that. I'm playing a bit dumb because I think what he actually means is this artificial intelligence business, which I don't understand why. <laughs> Why do we keep focusing on, on AI in this universe? Yes, it's interesting. But why? You know, Ash was an interesting element of the first movie. What, what spawned such an epic tale. Ash was fantastic. But he wasn't the centerpiece, right? He wasn't. That was... Uh, it was an interesting jumping off point for a world-building experience. Uh, an exercise, right? Look at Ash... Why is he there? What is he doing? Oh, right. Oh, and then the grand reveal at the end, he's an AI. But you didn't know that during the whole movie. <clears throat> it's only that it's the kickers just at the end. And then Bishop was obviously there in uh, in Aliens, the second film. And we knew that from the off, but that was just world building on the fact that, well, you know, the previous one and then it just world builds out from there. But then subsequent movies have just sort of spiraled out of control with this focus on AI as opposed to the beast itself I don't I don't personally I don't get it right you know the AVP games for instance did a fantastic job of having uh, AI they had AI mercenaries they had synthetic uh, doctors and things like that um, <clears throat> I think AVP 2 even had uh, a synthetic you know a, a doctor put into a synthetic body and all these kind of things right Fascinating things. Uh, really, really good. But never the focus. Just sideline. Part of the story. Just just sort of sidelines it. You know, it's just uh, something to carry the, the narrative along. And uh, yeah, I, I personally, I don't understand it. Uh, I don't understand that focus. Yes, it's interesting. But let's not get away from what makes the franchise so loved. And it's that Giga design. It's the, it's the biomech. It's the alien. It's that. That's what, you know, really grabs people. And it transcends. You know, that, that, that design and, and, and the beast itself has endured for so long for a reason. It is so well loved. So I thought that was interesting. Um, like I said, you know, he, he then says, well, we have this Wayland Yutani Corporation, which is clearly also developing AI. But what if there are other companies trying to look at uh, immortality in a different way with cyborg enhancements or transhuman downloads? And we've already had confirmed that, yes, there's going to be um, personalities going from human bodies to AI bodies, I guess. So, like, once again, we're now talking about humanity again. They sort of did this in Alien uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. It's interesting, but we're getting away from the alien. And where those movies fell apart was then they had to shoehorn the alien. I mean, they fell apart with many things, FYI. Um, but they had to shoehorn the alien in to please the fans. And I can't help but be somewhat concerned that maybe that'll happen again. I hope not. I hope I'll be wrong, but it you can see the risk of it occurring again. 
Uh, and like I said, yeah, transhuman downloads, cy cyborg enhancements, that's fine, that could be cool. Could, could lend some great, um, you know, practical effects and things like that. Um, yeah. Now, he does say, even if the show is 60% of the best horror action on the planet, there's still 40% where we have to ask, what are we talking about beneath it all? Thematically, uh, it has to be interesting. It's humbling to play with the iconography of this world. So, hopefully he's aiming... I mean, he says even if the show was 60% the best horror. You know, hopefully it'll aim like that. Hopefully the alien's in there somewhere. Um, because this does break canon being in the not-too-distant future set on Earth. If the alien's there in the not-too-distant future, it doesn't really make sense. That, that breaks canon, right? Uh, however... If the alien's not in it that much, it doesn't really break that much canon. But anyway, it'll be intriguing. There you go, ladies and gents. Just a quick rundown of the news, the updates. Uh, it'll be intriguing to see where this goes. I am I am intrigued. I remain cautiously optimistic, because I, I try to for these things until I've seen something, at the very least. Uh, and then I'll either tear it apart or I'll enjoy it. But let me know what you guys think down below. Sorry that this upload is late. This news came out like two, three days ago. Uh, but I've been a bit preoccupied with other bits and pieces. So I do apologise. Uh, the other bits and pieces I've been preoccupied with, just general life, of course. And I do have a second channel, which I'm looking to sort of push a little bit more now. It's in the description box. Vlogging, cars, that sort of stuff. If you want to know a little bit more about the man behind the camera, behind the mic, as it were, check it out. It's in the description box. Uh, and if you like what I do here, again, hit that thumbs up button, share the video, but then also maybe join the channel, become a member, become a Patreon. All that is linked down below. Thanks so much, the guys. Take care.